Coming to you live from Men's Retreat. This is The Weekly, a podcast brought to you by Calvary Bible Church. I'm your host, Jay Ewing. I reside on the Erie campus most often. I got Thomas in the booth today. Everyone booth, give a booth, applause like on stage. to Thomas. Oh, Wow, Thomas. Man. What a great crowd we the have crowd, The crowds are big today. They are big today, man. It's fun to be up at retreat. <laughs> We're, we are recording after uh, two sessions of the retreat already. But before we get into that, let's go to CalvaryBible.com. Click your campus. Find out what's happening in your neck of the woods. Great things happening this fall at Calvary. We'd love to connect with you, get you plugged in, get you here at Calvary. Also, you can always write us at the weekly at CalvaryBible.com. We filled your questions. We'd love to hear from you. All right, Thomas, we're at the retreat. Oh, man, we're deep into the pickleball tournament. <laughs> Round 19. Round 19 of the pickleball tournament. Now, when we wrap this up, we're going to go dominate some pickleball. Oh, I'm playing all afternoon. Gosh, I love time. it. For, for, for my, my man, Gray Johnson out yeah. there, first and last name. Wow, you drop it. Dude, he's been playing pickleball for a long time. He has been playing pickleball for and a long time. And when he first told me, it, I was like, pickleball, huh? Cool. And now I'm like so addicted. <laughs> <laughs> I can play pickleball all day. Yeah, totally, man. Uh, you know, pickleball to me is like a life-size version of ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like, oh, it feels like I'm on the board of ping pong playing a game. I think the nice thing is like so people who actually play have real skill. Yeah. But, like, if you went to go play, like, racquetball mm -hmm. and you don't have a kill shot, it's over. Yeah, you, you that takes months to develop. I, Years. I, yeah, I, would, I yeah, have no yeah. idea, right? Yeah. And me being, like, five five foot one, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help. Yeah. But, like, pickleball, yeah. it's, like, the level playing field. It is true. Let's do this. And we're up at Buena Vista. How do you say, how do you pronounce it? I say it Buena Vista. Not Buena Vista. No. I always go refer to this BB. Yeah, it's probably safe that way. <laughs> so I don't want to offend anyone. I've seen so many of these, like, you're supposed to say Buena, Buena. Yeah, totally. Colorado has some confusing language, don't, don't we? And I don't know. Naming like, of things. Yeah, I, I forget about it. Yeah, yeah. BV. It's BV. But hey, this morning, John. Oh, my gosh. This, oh, oh, this is so good. If, so. You're, if, you're, if you're a man at Calvary, you're not here at the retreat. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. If... Yeah, it was so good. So John, who lives in BV, mm -hmm. who moved up there from Erie, mm -hmm. oh, our good buddy, satisfied my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Low back after first right? session. Mm -hmm. After first session, we've had breakfast. We've read God's word. We've had coffee. Yeah, we've eaten breakfast. Which okay, just the, the fact that whoever told somebody here at the retreat that the men of Calvary drink gallons of coffee <laughs> starting at like five a.m. I just am thankful for them. Yeah. There, there are seriously pots of coffee everywhere at this place. Yeah, because the last time they were like, we, we've we never had a group that drinks this much coffee. <laughs> they like let it till like 11 p.m. Yeah, yeah totally. Anyway, so, so anyways, John John shows up. After session one. Session one. John shows up. Our, our, our souls are filled from Tom's teaching. And the God's word. Yeah. And we break bread. By breaking into the apple cider donuts. Oh my gosh. From Low Backs the, and BV, the yeah. original source that inspired the old mines. Well, the, dessert. The, they're from Low Backs. So John brings them down. No, he doesn't. Oh, yeah. I didn't know this. Oh, yeah. The same <laughs> donut. They are? Yeah. No way. Yeah. If you like this donut, yeah. you just got to go to the old mine. Yeah. You can you get can. them whenever you want. I don't, I don't know if they're always there, but yeah, there's, they're selling them. I thought they just copied the recipe. No, 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 no. They bring them down. Oh, yeah. Like, fly them down, <laughs> private jet, food it's delivery. It's like the fish of the day. They're like That's in Kansas, yeah. like Kansas City at the Seamark. Like the Seattle yeah, yeah, yeah. fish of the day? Yeah, the yeah, BV yeah. donut of the day. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. John, you're a legend. This he is, is a legend. Pure, pure legend. <laughs> <laughs> you need your shirt that on the back instead of, like, you know, it says coach sometimes. Yeah. It just says legend. Oh. And I was just really thankful, like, honestly, that he brought so many. Yeah. And that there were several guys that are... <laughs> Vegan and gluten free, <laughs> so they couldn't partake, which means more for me. More for us, mm. yes. But we're having a great time at Men's Retreat. At Trail West is such a swanky place, right? I like it. It's so nice here. You know, there's the like high ropes course, uh, zip lines, climbing walls, putt putt, yeah, uh, pickleball, pickleball, basketball, basketball, eight square or nine square, yeah. 
we're doing, there's yeah. a axe throwing because yeah we actually we came up in 2020 we brought our own axe throwing set they saw it saw our love for it and they're like we need oh to have really this. so they built one in two years oh good call yeah but i walked through the like the fort they had built yeah i'm thinking my kids would love to be here oh man right it'd be amazing yeah i gotta send them to camp here. and they do uh they do archery tag in the fort is that so, what that was? Yeah. The so you get like a paintball the face mask. Yeah. You get a bow, and you get these arrows that have little rubber plungers on them that are safe. Yeah. And you play tag through the fort that way. Oh, that's genius. That's amazing. All right, let's wrap this up, and, let's, and I'll shoot you in, yeah, in the head. We're, we are taking away our pickleball time. <laughs> All right, so the we'll, clock, this has been a good going. retreat so far. I've had yeah. just so many good conversations with guys of just the theme of First Peter. So you and, and the team decided that we would journey through First Peter yes. as the book for uh, this year's men's retreat. Yeah, and, you know, the men's retreat is designed that way because we've done James that way. We yeah. just get the ESV scripture journal. Hey, we got four or five sessions. Let's get through a book of the yeah. Bible. And we don't get through the whole thing because First Peter is dense. Oh, yeah. My goodness. I, You know, at the men's retreat, this is something that I just love is that at 7.30 before breakfast, we read the entirety of the book. So this morning at 7.30, we read through First Peter. We had two guys that just led all of us through the reading. And I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to these lines and I'm these familiar things of First Peter. I'm like, man, this is a complex book. Mm-hmm. It's a simple book in its form, but yet it has some really complex ideas in it some complex truth about God that I think is just, it just makes me love God more when I see that God is a God who is so creative that when he communicates to us through books like first Peter, it's just not like simple. You know what I mean? It is simple, but it isn't. It's All right, depth. So what was Maybe it depth. I'm th- when you're with the, with the team you're with Perry, Mark and Justin, and you're probably trying to decide what you're going to do. Or the weekend, what in First Peter or what about First Peter were you thinking? Yeah, this is something we should zero in on. Well, I, I came to the guys and I said, "Hey, this is a true story." I was like, "You know what? I, I don't oversee men's ministry anymore." Mark Luby's in that position. Perry, Justin. yeah, you're a backseat driver giving suggestions. Yeah, totally. And I said, "I would love to help you do one more retreat." I said, "Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do First Peter," and they're like, "Okay." And they were like, why are we going to do First Peter? And I was like, because I have inside information that it's one of Tom's favorite books. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I would love to get through a book that Tom loves. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's how we actually came up. <laughs> really? <laughs> there was very little. Yeah. I was just like, I heard Tom loves this book. Yeah. This is a short book. Well, there's a, if this is a book to love, it is a book. Is a worthy book. Yeah, and you should ask. You know, if you're on the Boulder campus, especially, you should ask Tom sometime why First Peter. So, why does it, he's, he has a great fondness for it? Yeah, it um, served it as an instrumental moment in his ministry. Yeah, so, long ago. Story. Yeah, and um, you know, I think this First Peter. Now, you know, as we got the scripture journals, as we're reading through it, as Mark Luby was sort of reading through it and giving themes to you guys, giving some direction, putting some scaffolding mm-hmm. together, like. Here's some ideas for men in this season with First Peter. I just I'm blown away that that God is like the gospel is so rich that it just infiltrates all these spaces through um, the time and space. You know, and then we're, First Peter is about guys. You've been mentioning this a lot. This is a theme conversation I've heard a lot. Um, even in the last 24 hours, is it's a book of exile. So you guys have been setting up a great job at like setting us up with like, what does it mean to be in exile? Because it's hard for us to sort of we're Americans. Oh, totally. Like it's it's hard to feel like we're in exile. In some ways, it's inappropriate to think to try to teach as though the upper middle class American is in any sort of form of exile. But all right. So before we'll get into that in a second. Uh, I'm I'm super thankful to be in a book, especially uh, a letter, because you, know, you go to all these different retreats, and 
It's like, who's the speaker? Who's going yeah. to come be the speaker? Yeah. And they're going to come, and they're going to speak about their ideas of self-improvement or whatever it is. Yeah. Which, you know, there's a lot of great conferences I get good insights on. Mm-hmm. You know, financial conferences. Um, Marriage conference is coming up. Totally. Yeah. What I like about taking a book is you're basically allowing Peter to be your speaker. Yes. You're saying, oh, hey, who do we want to be our speaker? Let's, let's let the apostle Peter be our speaker. Mm-hmm. And he's going to speak these words. And we're actually going to read it with no commentary attached to it several times during the weekend. Yep. And just let Peter speak. Yep. And then we're going to bring up, I would, I would call us interpreters. Yeah. Right? So bring up some interpreters to help us better understand what Peter's messages are. And that's where I think the power comes in. It's like, this is just God's word, which is the eternal word, right? So Peter says, all these things are going to fade mm-hmm. except the word of God and the word of God that saved you. Yeah and guards you, and is building you up, that word is never going anywhere. How crazy, we've talked about that before. How it, That's one of the most fascinating things in my own faith, is like, the word of God is eternal. It like, we can't take anything to cross the gap between planet Earth and death, right? Into eternity, except the word of God. <laughs> yes. That whatever we read about the word of God, whatever we implanted in our souls of the word of God, that means read daily, reading your Bible, going to church, memorizing this. We can actually keep. Yeah, it's going to be eternal. And and part of that is these are the words that God has spoken. Yes. So it's an, it's a he's revelation eternal. of who God is. And God's eternal. Yeah. Jesus is the word. He's yeah. logos and yeah. he's eternal. But you're saying, hey, I want to invite Peter to come in and speak mm-hmm. to us. And First Peter is such a great letter to do that because... Peter's writing it to churches. Right. Like to group, like basically it'd be like, hey, Calvary, get up to the mountains. We got a letter from Peter and we're going to read it and then we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Like, so he, for a weekend. Yeah. Like, like he wrote it to us <laughs> yeah. in the first century, you know? Right. So I love that. And I love that Peter is the author because I just, I don't know, just as a guy, I relate to Peter. I mean, he's the first one, we talked about this, to be called by Christ to be a disciple. He's the first one to really, to really profess Christ as, or Jesus as the Christ. He's the first one to get out of the boat, walk on water. Mm. The only one, he's the first one to one of the first ones to see him in the transfiguration. You know, like first one, one of the first ones to the tomb outside yeah. the women. You're like, okay. He's also the first one to put like his foot in his mouth to re- try to rebuke Jesus. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, he's like, oh. and he's the first one to go back to fishing. Yeah. He's after like, guys, this was, this was a mess. Let's go back to fishing. Yeah. So it's like, okay, he's he's following Jesus three steps forward, two steps back. And I oftentimes I feel like that's that's mm-hmm. my movement. Mm-hmm. It's not just up to the right. And so it's like, okay, now he's older. You maybe put thirty years on him. Maybe he's in his sixties, I don't know. Yeah. That's that's a more mature Peter that's gonna encourage the church. And I wanna know what he says. A more mature Peter that had the Holy Spirit that lived through the beginnings of the early church in Jerusalem and now seeing it scattered. Yeah. Like there's a lot of maturity. There's a lot of suffering mm-hmm. and maturity in him now. Which just refines this message of like, what are we doing here? You know, like <laughs> yeah, there, totally. there could be, there's so much suffering that this early church is going through that it's easy for Peter or someone like Peter to be a fear monger. Right. And we have a lot of fear mongering pastors and all kinds of leaders today of be afraid. And so listen to me. Yeah, and buy my book. And buy. <laughs> it happens all the time, man. It, it feels like it. it. Like they make movies about things like this. Yeah. It's like, guys. And Peter, so Peter doesn't want to leave you in fear. Peter's like, really, there's actually nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. But what I'm trying to capture is your focus. Mm-hmm. Like I want you to focus in. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. Who are we, and where are we going? Like, right. what's this all about? And so he opens up writing, and he and he calls them. The exiles, mm-hmm. those those who are believers in the dis- dispersion, this diaspora. I thought you dropped a word there, elect exiles. Yeah. A super interesting word, right? You know, several times in the book of First Peter, he wants his readers, at least when they think of their salvation. Yep, that's right. Okay, we can get into a theological discussion of like the implications of this and how Jesus says whomsoever. Yeah, yeah. Great, another podcast. But Peter wants you to think. The reason you're saved is because you were chosen. Mm -hmm. Like God laid his affections on you Mm -hmm. and called you onto team Jesus, Mm -hmm. elected you. And it's like that, that's just alone a humbling position. I wouldn't even say team Jesus because that means you're outside the family. 
you can be a, on a team and not be in the family. He's calling you to the family, yeah. Jesus. It's only the whole family, right? right. That's a good point. Yeah. So. so the exile piece, like, exile is a, a massive motif in the scriptures. So it's, it's it, anything living outside of, of home. And basically most of all your Bible has been re- written in exile. Yeah. Almost all of it. Yeah. So the very first exile, anybody know on the podcast what the first exile was? Ooh, got to take her over there. <laughs> no, uh, I, but I thought this was interesting because I wasn't thinking of this. I was thinking of the second one. But the first one is? Out of Eden. Out of Eden. So yeah, the yeah. home that God created us to be in was in perfect union with him in Eden. Mm-hmm. And so the first exile that, that human beings experience is the exile into sin. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of been the exile that we've all kind of lived in mm-hmm. since in some, in some ways. And then, then God's calling a family, and he brings them to a land of promise through Abraham. And that family, in times of, of hardship, move into Egypt yeah. through several circumstances. And this is Joseph. The, and this is the exile I was thinking of. This is the exile of, of slavery. Sa- slavery, yeah. yeah. Coming out of exile, Exodus. Yeah, then, then there's the exodus, like yeah. that's the exile of wilderness, of traveling between what was what you were enslaved by and then to a land of promise. And then there's the just full-on disobedience in which God is sending prophets to woo his people back, and they're just refusing to humble themselves before God. So he brings judgment, and so Assyrians and Babylonians come in, and, and they bring him into exile of captivity. And you want to read some crazy history, just read about how they, how they treated. Oh, it, yeah, it's like... This is why you can't say, hey, white American, middle class, upper, you know, yeah. whatever. You're in exile. It's like, uh, did you read Daniel? Yeah. <laughs> that's, Do you know what happened in Syria and Babylon? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an exile of, of captivity and judgment. And then Jesus is on the planet, mm-hmm. and he's walking around. And he, they're geographically in the land, mm-hmm. but they're occupied by, by Rome. Yeah. And so there's an exile of occupation. So like... Geographically, you're in home, but not politically. Like, you don't have governance Mm -hmm. over you. And so there's an exile of occupation, which could be the most similar to the American exile, is you're occupied by a foreign force. And what was so important to just clear up for people is we we don't view ourselves as exiles as because somehow we have lost, quote-unquote lost, some cultural, moral majority Mm -hmm. of America, as though if we were to regain that, we wouldn't be in exile anymore. Right. That has nothing to do with it. Right. And Peter doesn't want you to think anything like that either. Like 200 years ago in, in America, you were in exile still. Yeah. yeah. He wants you to know you're not a citizen of any of these nation states. And there's this tension of you're a citizen, you got to build a house, you got to love your community, you want your nation to thrive, you country. want to be just, yeah. you want to love your country, but then ultimately you have a higher citizenship. And so if you feel like, man, there's a fish out of water right now, what is going on? Like the, the world just feels like it's, it's changing in such a way that I don't fit in it. First Peter is this great letter. that says, yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Like you're alien. You're, you're a sojourner on this, on this earth. And that would make sense. So that's like one edge of the sword. So those who are feeling their exile, like I just feel so foreign in my, even in my home country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that would make sense. Cause you're in exile. And so he's going to talk to you about how to live in exile. The other side of that blade though is, for those of us who say exile, like I don't feel like I'm an exile. I feel like I'm right at home. Yeah. You're like, Ooh, well this should cut the other way to say, maybe you're not following Christ in the ways that you should, because you should feel mm-hmm. as you should feel your exile, your alienness yeah. in some way. You still feel strange. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking about this. What is the indication you're not in exile anymore? What's the indication? Like, when the people of God came out of exile, what was their indication? And I think it's this. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I've been thinking about this for a couple of hours. I think it was the, and this is a big word, theocratic rule of God. Yeah, that's when right. They, we were, they realized that's when they were not in exile. Correct. And that's when we'll realize it's God's complete reign is when we will not be in exile. Yes. Does that make sense? Yep, 100%. We see that in, throughout the scriptures, but... What that means, though, too, is that as exiles, we are longing for, and I don't know if I always do this in my, in my own faith, long for God's rule in my life. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. I think that is that is the defining piece of being in the true home. Mm. Like, even the promised land isn't the true home of God's people. Mm-hmm. It is a provisional home. Yeah. But Eden is home. 
right in in fellowship with God under his right and rule reign yeah because they had they had their land and they did have their ability to govern themselves in fact the lord gave them judges first and then eventually kings but even then they weren't completely under his rule and reign does that make sense oh yeah and i think that's where you know a lot of us think when we think of this idea of our citizenship is in heaven mm-hmm. as paul says so we're aliens here because we're going somewhere else but heaven isn't the final destination of home either mm-hmm. because you weren't made to just be a spirit being. Mm-hmm. You're made to be spirit and flesh. And so Peter says in Second Peter about how God is going to restore the heavens and the earth, and then we, we're going to reside with him on the renewed earth and renewed heavens. Mm-hmm. And that's what Eden was, like the perfect union between those two. Yep. And so... Our, like, actually, our, our d- final destination is we are spiritual and physical with the reign of God in our life. On earth. On earth. Yeah. yeah. That's what, this is what home looks like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, oh man, that now that gets me really excited. Yeah. Is, okay, I'm not just waiting to get beamed up to some other foreign planet. Right. Um, there's an intermediary state in which I will be with God, but that's not my permanent state. Yeah. Right? The, our revelation ends with a new heavens, heavenly city coming down to earth and a restored earth as well. Yeah, and a complete restoration of ourselves with God in order that we can enjoy them to the max. Yeah. Which is so crazy to think about. If you like, if today my goal, if I woke up and I named my goals today, right? My first goal was find a coffee. Donut. Find a donut. <laughs> Get coffee. John's bringing donuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the second one is have a great time at men's retreat. I'm not thinking about, oh, my goal today is I can't wait for God to have complete reign in my life. Yeah. Does that make sense? And so, maybe why I get so frustrated with the world around me. Well, that's the piece is like First Peter opens with, hey, you're in a new family. You've been born again to a new family. This family DNA is living hope mm-hmm. that no matter where you're at right now, no matter what you're stuck in, there's new mercies coming. Like it's an eternally hopeful family. It's a hopeful family. It's so great. Yeah. And then there's an inheritance to being part of the family, right. which is undefiled imperishable, mm-hmm. kept for you in heaven. And just so you know, you're being kept yeah. for it. So like your inheritance is being kept and you're being kept for it. And I think that's why it is so frustrating in today's world because like I'm trying to keep things that are by its nature decaying, mm-hmm. that are falling apart. That's right. And it's like, man, why, why do I have to go back and maintain my lawn and my house and my cars and I have to maintain these relationships. I have to maintain my relationships. I have to maintain my purity. It's like, this is so exhausting. It's like, yeah, that's because this whole thing is wearing out like a garment. Yeah. And we look forward to a future inheritance that is going to last forever. Undefiled, yeah. Yeah. And that's a def- definite in- indicator. Those things frustrate you. and means you're in exile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> means, yeah, it's temporary. Well, I think that's helpful because you're like, I'm not frustrated by them. Then. Yeah. It's like, no, not. that's that is the regular maintenance of exile. Yeah. And that's where Peter, I think, is such a great realist of, hey, in exile, you're going to face temptations, passions mm-hmm. to try to woo your heart to love a lamb that's not home. Yeah. And there's going to, I'm going to, in this time, there's going to be sufferings and persecutions that are kind of, that are going to try to drive you away mm-hmm. from trusting the Father to bring you home. Like those are the two, those are two those pressures. Two, yep. Right. And, and Peter says, okay, what you need to know is you have an identity as an alien. Like you're not just ambiguous here. Mm-hmm. And so that's where he starts laying out. And I would just encourage everyone who's listening, go find First Peter and start reading through it and just circle every time Peter gives an indication of who you are. Mm-hmm. When he names you, just circle that. And then just think, oh, that's, that's who I am. I'll give you a couple. Chosen, royal, royal pure, yeah. and possessed. Like belonging. I mean, they're just so good. Beloved. Beloved. Yeah. So... That's where I think Peter becomes a great encouragement is if you're going to be in exile, you have to know your identity. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if your primary identity is not American citizen, you know, female American citizen, male, you know, um, American citizen, upper class, yeah. lower class, you know, whatever, these are the identity markers. Then what are the, what are the practices? Like what, what's, the, what's the character of an exile that really is alien? Right. So I keep my alien identity and. And that's where we've been talking about three things that every exile needs. Hope. 
Hope is one. Humility. Humility. And the holy priesthood. Yeah, it's holiness. Yeah. And those are just alien to our world right now. Like our our culture does not produce hopeful people. Mm-hmm. But but God has a way to live that's hopeful. And then, like, man, gosh, if you could just instill humility into a bunch of Christians right now mm-hmm. and political leaders and just every every conversation that you're part of, like the humble the humble woman is necessary. And then holiness. Like I know it gets like who wants to be holy? You're like, oh, you want to be holy because the the consequence of not being holy is that it, and this Peter says, it devours your soul. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, it ruins my true being. That's why I have so much angst, mental anguish, frustration, discouragement, despair. It's like the way I'm living is destroy eating, rotting my true being. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I'm so restless. Yeah, man. That's so good. That's so good. Hey, thanks for your time at retreat. I appreciate yeah. you, man. Thanks for being here and leading us and guiding us through First Peter. It's good. I can't wait to bring the conversation back home and, and how this conversation multiplies itself into families and communities for weeks and months ahead. Yeah, and we, we look back to stepping back into Luke 11. Luke chapter 11 on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, take great. a look at that. That's a the interesting woes, The woes of Jesus. Hey, Calvert, we're so thankful you're listening in, that you're always plugged into the weekly I have a verse that just really just inspires me to think about you, to pray for you as you pray for us, as though though you've not seen him, you love him. I'm just so amazed at how many people at Calvary just love the Lord, even though they've never seen him or have not seen him yet. You guys have a great week. Thanks for tuning in to this special edition of us at the Men's Retreat, and we look forward to being with you on Sunday.